What's going on YouTube? Clover Bells here back with another Scarlet Violet video and today we're going to be looking at Sinishout which is again one of the new options for the Regulation E format uh, and it's a pretty good one and a lot of different cores and teams can really utilize the support uh, from a Sinisha because it just has so much tools and so much utility. Now, you know, what we're going to do is just look at its stats, you know, take a look at the premier move set and then start talking about some potential archetypes and cores that can really utilize Sinisha or have already utilized it relatively well. And then we'll do some team building of our own, uh, particularly with one of our old favorite options in Regulation D. If you know the thumbnail, uh, then you already know what it is, right? So, you know, base HP 71, not all that great, but base 106 defense, very good. And special defense, base 80, you know, a little bit above average. Okay, so not too bad in terms of the bulk. Uh, the special attacking stat is the selling point here with 121. So that's quite nice. Uh, now, in terms of the speed, of course, we don't really care too much about its speed because it's meant to be a bulky support option while still dealing, uh, you know, above average damage, I would say, right? Now... Grass Ghost, not too bad at all. Uh, in you'll be competing with slots, you know, something like Flutter made for that ghost slot. But uh, as far as like what it can do in terms of the move sets and ability, this is you know how we're going to be utilizing it, right? So of course, hospitality, you know, it'll restore your your allies' HP, right? So typically, it wants to be paired with things uh, that are known to be taking damage or are using things that forced to uh, sacrifice some HP. Right? And then what you can do is just bring in the Sinisha and now all of a sudden that HP loss uh, is somewhat mitigated, right? Because uh, of, of its uh, ability, right? And then from here, you know, Macha Gacha, the selling point of it, you know, the signature move, the fact that you can heal yourself, right? With it, it's a spread move. So that means twice, okay? And you have the chance to inflict burn is quite good, all right? And to say the least, right? But then you just look at its other sets here, right? Rage Powder, of course. So redirection support is actually good. And it's a grass type, right? So think of Amoongus, right? And this thing is, you know, and to a degree replacing Amoongus. So are the Ogre Pawns, right? I feel like we should do an entire video on like the decline of Amoongus, right? Just because of a Pokemon like this, right? It's replacing it, okay? And then from here, you even get access to Strength Sap, right? And if you remember Bramblegast, the other Pokemon, you know, kind of like this that also got Strength Sap, you know, that, that's just more healing. So you're getting healing here, you're getting healing over here. The, this thing is going to be relatively difficult to defeat, you know, especially if you make it super bulky, right? And then finally, you get Speed Control with Trigum. Look at this. Oh my goodness, this is a, such a good Pokemon, right? Speed Control here, uh, you know, damage mitigation here, along with healing. Then you have Redirection Support. And then you have status infliction and more healing. You're getting the complete package in this Pokemon. I, I feel like you know, so, so many teams can really use it. Uh, it's very, very splashable. I'm not, I'm not ready to put it in the S tier yet. It's almost there. Okay, I, I want the format to fully play out first and actually get announced before I even put it there. But it, it is a very, very strong A tier Pokemon. And then if you add something like this, the Rocky Helmet set. Uh, you're just dealing chip damage against these physical physical attackers now Can you put a recovery berry here? Yes, you can but we're gonna be putting it on something else here Okay, so this is like a premier set and then if you just go like tarot water, you know stuff like uh, Flying type attacks and even super effective fire type attacks uh, now you can neutralize that by going with tarot water uh, Because now everything is just neutralized. All right now in terms of how we want to uh, You know combo it with things. So just think of like combo como Okay, as well as like Belly Drum Snorlax. Uh, these are things that like to utilize Sinister's ability, right? Because combo, if you remember what it does, uh, Clangorous Soul, right? You're taking a, a cut to your HP, right? 33%. But then all of a sudden you switch into Sinister and now you're getting 25% of that back. So you're, you're basically not sacrificing all that much and you're getting free stat value. So, you know, combo Sinisha, you're, you're, this is a good partner here. And then if you even consider Snorlax, right? So Sinisha Snorlax, you know, these belly drum sets, okay, where you're get, you know, cutting five, 50%, okay? Then, you know, you get a little bit of a berry recovery and then you add the fact that you're getting hospitality and Snorlax is basically clicking belly drum almost for free in that, in that sense, right? So these are two Pokemon that definitely can utilize it. Uh, and they have been used together, right? Remember the Wolf Click team, uh, that he brought into a tour uh you know the the snorlax combo and sinister combination was relatively nice and then you had clefairy plus two other friends so 
in that sense, yeah, that's pretty good. And then if you just even consider like Hisui and Arcanine, which is taking a whole bunch of recoil damage from stuff like Flare Blitz and or Head Smash, right? This is another Pokemon that can definitely utilize Sinistra uh, in this sense, right? Because you're you're just basically neutralizing the, this Flare Blitz damage, right? But um, in terms of uh, what else, like it doesn't even have to be paired with Pokemon that deal damage to itself. Like the fact that you can still like heal things that, you know, would take damage, you know, if you're trying to set them up, then the Sinistra can help you out there, right? Especially with the Rage Powder support. But the one that we're going to be pairing it today is one of my old favorites in Regulation D, like we said, and that is the Galarian Moltres. Yes, Clover Moltres is coming back in Regulation E, all right? Because if you just consider the combination here, remember, how do you proc Berserk? You have to lose half of your HP, right? So Moltres wants to take this damage, and then all of a sudden, you know, you combo this with Sinisha, and now you can go past the threshold of Berserk and now be able to proc it yet again. And of course, we're still going to be putting a Citrus Berry here, you know, so in that sense, we might even get two chances to be able to activate Berserk, right? And now the whole idea is how can I support these two so this way I can actually stay on the field and deal damage over time, right? So it's all about mitigating even more damage. And I can't think of another Pokemon to bring to this team than the Alolan Ninetales with the Aurora Bill, right? So uh, now we're just going to be relatively bulky on all corners, right? With the Aurora Veil, you know, providing support for Moltres. Remember Moltres Grim Snow screens? That was a thing in Regulation D a little bit. Um, we did not go that direction, uh, but it has been done. Especially when you put this uh, with the Sui and Gudra and along the Grim Snow. That was a thing in Regulation D. But we're going to use Ninetales here. And just like in our previous video, we're going to use the Trifecta Core of Ninetales, Landorus, Okay, and the Iron Hands, of course, right? Because again, uh, this is all about, you know, first of all, we needed physical damage on the team, right? Because right now we had three special attackers, but now we had Landris and Iron Hands here. Now you're adding Intimidate for physical damage reduction along with your Aurora Veil. And now you add Fake Out Pressure. So if you want to be able to set up this nasty plot, or if you want to help set up the Aurora Veil in the first place, you know, these are the Pokemon that can help you do that. Uh, and then at the same time, you know, Moltres, uh, is weak to, you know, these electric type attacks from Iron Hands, but then you can just switch in, you know, either Landers or your own Iron Hands for that matter, uh, and to be able to take that relatively well, right? Now, we do have a little bit of a weakness here in terms of, like, um, ice damage here, right? We, these Pokemon don't want to be taking Chin Power attacks, so we needed a little bit of ice resist. So in comes the Heatran here uh, in the final slot, okay? So Heatran, again, another Pokemon that generally likes to, um, what, 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 what was I going to say? That likes to uh, enjoy the screen's benefit, right? Because again, look at this bulk, 106, 106 here, and then of course 91 HP. And then, you know, you just add the leftovers here and the Heatran is just going to stay on the field for a while. Uh, and then again, like I said, it's a nice pivot option for the Moltres, right? So uh, this is the team, right? So, you know, with Moltres, and nine tails here so let me just reorganize this uh just in terms of how we want to position this right and then technically speaking like this five man core is already proven and it is already strong right and if you don't like moltres then what you can do is just put back scalloper on this and now you have a pretty solid nine tails snow backs team right this also works if you don't like that if you prefer something like roaring moon all right, Roaring Moon is also another Pokemon that can benefit from all these options. And you even get access to Tailwind, uh, which can help, you know, stuff like Ninetales, Landers, and Heatran. These are like these mid-tier options, even though Ninetales is much faster. So you could do this, and then you have a Dragon Fairy Steel Core here uh, going for you. So that's also another option, okay? But all in all, you know, this last slot is very... Even something like Okie Dokie, right? Like I even did this with Okie Dokie, and that also worked out relatively well. So... Uh, you, all you have to do is just take like a five splashable core of Pokemon and then slap on the thing you want to build around it, and which in this case uh, was the Galarian Moltres here, right? But uh, again, this is still a Sinistra video, but you can see the, the, the utility that we have here on the squad, right? We have Intimidate, we got Fake Out, we got the redi Redirection over here, right? Let me put the Fake Out over here. Then you have um, the Screen Support with the Aurora Bill, right? And then potentially you have... And then, like I said, speed control here with the trick room here. And then you can even consider Icy Wind on this Nine Tails, uh, you know, because there is no Tailwind here. Like, technically, Moltres does get Tailwind, 
but we're not going to be utilizing that. We're going to go with a simple nasty plot set uh, on our Moltres, right? So, but uh, if you, the viewer, wants to try that, then you can definitely try that. But this is the stick that we came up with. And when I was testing, it was actually working relatively well. Now, Moltres is also really good just in general in the, in the meta because, again, you are a strong flying type. Uh, you're going to do well against the Ogre Pond. That being said, the dragon flying types are the better role, right? Think of like Roaring Moon and think of Salamon. Salamon was finally used by a couple players and, you know, it had some good results. And Salamon finally is probably going to make an impact, right? Just because it's so good against not only just these Urshifus and Rillabooms, but all the Ogre Ponds in general, right? Because uh, dragon type re resists all the fire, water, and grass type attacks that they're going to be clicking. So, uh, in that sense, anyway, back to this. So now let's just go ahead and build this team, you know, just in terms of like move sets and items. So uh, you can go Icy Wind here. You can just simply go Moonblast here, uh, protect, okay? And then with the Light Clay. Now that being said, uh, at the time of testing, I was using Blizzard, uh, but you know, I may try Icy Wind later on, but uh, I'm pretty sure it can work overall, right? But I just wanted to just be bulky behind these screens and any damage I was taking got mitigated and then any, I healed them up anyway. So like, did I really care too much about the speed control? I had Trick Room anyway, so that was also pretty good. But this is how I wanted to go with the Nine Tails. Uh, you can go either Terra Ghost here to like dodge the fake out stuff, or you can go simply Terra Water. I feel like if you're going into ladder, Ghost is better. But if you're in best of three team sheets, right? Open team sheets, the water is the more optimal play, right? So, you know, being able to resist fire and steel type attacks is, is quite nice. Uh, the Moltres here. So I still kept it like, you know, Terra Poison, just kind of like regulation. I want to resist Flutter main attacks. Uh, and then here, you know, Citrus Berry, Fiery Wrath, of course, your signature spread move, Air Slash. Uh, your you know flying type attack and then just simply protect right so I think this is always still like relatively good uh, and you know for a Moltres set by the way Moltres is also pretty good against like opposing Sinisha's might I add uh, Sinisha here that we already got the, the set here Landris same Landris set choice scarf of course that specs <laughs> there we go all right stomping tantrum you know, Rock Slide, U-Turn, and Terra Blast, Terra Flying. This is what gives Ogre Pond players a nightmare. All right, Iron Hands here, Assault Vest for sure, Fake Out, Wild Charge, Drain Punch, and Heavy Slam here. By the way, Iron Hands loves Screens, Nine Tails, right? Because this thing is bulky enough as it is. How are you removing this, right? Especially when you're just getting recovery over time with Drain Punch, okay? You, you can even consider Swords Dance, Iron Hands here, and then Assault Vest, Heat Trend over here. Uh, in that regard, right? But I digress. Still Terra Grass here. Now you can also go technically like Terra Water, you know, just so that you, you're not at the mercy of the Fire Ogre Pond, although technically it still has a grass move, but you know, you can still go with grass just to dodge like Spore Shenanigans uh, if you're still encountering the Amoongus's uh, to a degree, right? Uh, terra Grass, Terra, terra Blast, Heat Tran um, for sure. So, but then the other two moves are standard Heat Wave and Earth Power, of course. Uh, here's the Terra Blast, and then here's Protect. We don't need Substitute here, right? Because we have our own Trick Room here, so we don't have to necessarily stall them. Uh, but again, if you like Sub, then you're more than welcome to put something like Substitute over here. But I think we got what we need in terms of, like, the six, right? So now what we're going to do is just some generate some quick EV spreads. A lot of these are, are, like, familiar spreads that we've done already in terms of, like, team building start mode. Okay, so we'll just, you know, recopy and re recycle some of these EVs because they're all, they're, they're pretty good starting EVs. Okay, starting here. Okay, so with Ninetales, uh, you know, again, just like pretty much max HP with Timid is the way to go at the moment. And I just go about right here, 188. And uh, this is to outspeed max speed Chiyu, of course. I don't want to be taking those fire type attacks at all. Uh, and then from here, you know, I just want to have an even number in my bulk, you know, just so that I'm not at the mercy of... You know, not, oh, by the way, this is Snow Warning, not Snow Cloak. All right, there we go. Yeah, and again, like I said, I want the even numbers here so I can optimize against my Aurora Veil because if I have an odd number here, then the odd number times 1.5 will give you a decimal, which rounds down. So this way, if we keep it as an even number, we get nice whole numbers uh, for our, our stats, right? Uh, from here, so Moltres... Uh, I, of course, I, lo I love Modest Moltres and, you know, anytime I have a berry, you know, I always want to make it super bulky. Something like this, this trademark 192 benchmark 
for HP, you know, just for, you know, the barrier recovery in the sense, uh, 296 EVs to play with. So I just like to go first bump here, uh, with the special attack, right? And then the, the pick a damage cow. For me, I was going with, you know, can I survive adamant 156 iron hands drain punch, right? So if I just, you know, pull up the calc here, right? With Galarian Moltres, if I just take away this, uh, and then if I go into something like Iron Hands, right over here, AV Iron Hands, 236, right? But I was calculating for a 156 because who's running max attack Iron Hands these days, right? Right? Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, just, just checking my viewers out there. Anyway, uh, so how much defense do I need? I believe it was about like 132, 124, something like that, right? So we're getting close. Uh, yeah, we're getting close. There's a 6.3 calc. All right, there we go. We got it. So 132, that's pretty good. Uh, that's actually very, very optimal in that sense, right? So 132 investment, uh, and then just put one point in special defense. That's really all I need. And then the rest goes into speed. Good speed mark, you know, 121, outspeeding that 120 um, tier, you know, for the, the genies under Tailwind. But uh, I'm, I'm sorry, after 1.5, but, you know, we don't really have that here. But, you know, you still want some speed at the very least, right? Especially against like other Heatrans and Rillabooms in that sense, right? But either way, a little bit of speed is, uh, is still pretty good. Sinistra here. So I just made this like, you know, just general benchmark EVs. One point in speed, of course. I wanted pretty much just to like max this HP, right? And then just have like the second bump here in special attack, which is 148. And again, like I say in every video, if you're trying to play competitive Pokemon, and you don't know what EV bumps are, you got to comment in the video description below asking what are EV bumps because they are a fundamental concept that all builders need to understand, right? And utilize to their advantage. So if you don't know what they are yet, comment below, ask me what are EV bumps and I will tell you to you, right? But the rule is generally um, every 80 EVs after the first bump is where you'll see the plus two bonus here in, in, in the nature stat. So in this case, because my nature stat is modest, Right, here's the first bump, right? You see how you go from 163 to 165, right? This is the first bump. But then after this, every EV investment, your, your stat is only going up by one point, right? Until you reach the second one, which is right here, 174 to 176, right? Another 80 EVs from that 68. And then if I were to keep continuing, you know, again, right here, 185, 187, right? This is the third benchmark, 228. All right, but I'm going to keep it here uh, at the 176 mark. Uh, and then from here, you have 104 EVs left to play with. So literally, I just put one point in the defense because, you know, that I don't really need too much. Uh, and then just put the rest in special defense. But all I did was, but then you can even just do something like this, right? Uh, just to get some nice even numbers uh, for your Aurora Veil stats. But, you know, if you don't care for that, you can just do this. All right. So it's still totally fine. But, you know, I'll keep it here like this uh, for now. Anyway, Landris. So... I always like max speed, adamant Landris. You know, a lot of these Landrises, they like to go for 138, 139. Uh, this is what's going to outspeed uh, the modest flutters, of course, after the choice card variant. Uh, I'm sorry, the timid flutters and even the timid Chan Pals uh, with the choice card. But then at this point, just go max speed. <laughs> All right. You know, just speed creep those Landrises. Uh, and from here, I went, you know, just one point in the bulk. Just go once 116 adamant here. Uh, this is totally fine. And then just dump the rest into HP like this. Uh, that's all I really needed here. Let, and then Iron Hands, we already know what my Iron Hands spread is. You know, I've been using this since Regulation D. No problem whatsoever. Second benchmark here. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, right here. One, 156 investment gets me to 198. 76 HP investment. A little bit of optimization. 239. This was against, you know, Sand Chip back in the day. But, you know, it's still pretty good investment because you still need it. Uh, combined with the 252 Spadef uh, and the Assault Vest to be able to live Terra Blast, Terra Fairy Fluttermain, right? Modest 116 plus one boost. All right, then from here, one point in defense and then just a tiny bit of speed, you know, just to win some potential speed ties, you know, with other Iron Hands. You know, so a lot of them, they do go a little bit speedy, but not all of them. So at the very least, let me outspeed the ones that are just going like either four or 12. You know, we got 20, okay? Then over here, the Heatran, so the main thing with the heat trend that I was doing uh, was again, just modest nature, you know, just put right here the first benchmark 76 investment uh, and then 204, right? Because I have the leftovers recovery. I want to optimize that perfect 12 HP recovery per turn. 108 defense, all right? 
Uh, this is, you know, pretty good uh, in terms of like taking that Iron Hands Drain Punch overall. But, and then just, uh, you know, 76 investment, and just a little bit of speed, not a whole lot. You know, again, um, does he hit? Where is it? Over here. Now nope, that's still the gun. Yeah, so then after that, I just I just dumped the rest in special defense like this, right? Yeah, again, nice little even numbers here. And again, if this was Tailwind, this would outspeed Dragapult. We don't have Tailwind here, of course, but that's still fine. You know, we are a relatively slow team, especially with this uh, Sinisha, you know, clicking Trick Room in that sense. Uh, but again, you know, damage mitigation with Nine Tails Landers is always very good. Then you have Sinisha in the back to heal. And then some games you can bring the Moltres. Other games, you can just bring either Iron Hands or Heatran in this sense, right? But uh, overall, I, I do like the way this 6 looked on paper, you know, when I was testing it a little bit. So if I were to just pull up the EVs on the screen, right? Something like this. Yeah, this is pretty much what we were rocking. And just, you know, again, the 5 was very, very good. You know, me, I'm just a Moltres fan. And, you know, we I use Moltres the most in Regulation D. And I think it just makes sense to be able to support it with all these options here. You got the Landris supporting the Intimidate because again, Moltres, spe Moltres' special defense is higher than its regular defense. So, you know, Landris Intimidate is quite good. Then you add the Aurora Veil and how is the Moltres dying now, right? And whatever damage it does take, you got the Berry and Sinisha healing it over time. And then two more Pokemon that generally enjoy screens altogether, which is the Iron Hands and the Heatran. So we got a lot of things going uh, for this kind of team. Um, so now let's just go ahead and, you know, showcase it in just a couple quick showdown battles, yeah? All right, so it almost looks like a mirror, right? With Landris, Iron Hands, and Sinister over there. Uh, but then he has three different options. There's a Dark Urshifu here with a Hydreigon all of a sudden. I don't know why there's a Hydreigon in Regulation E. Uh, and then there is the Iron Moth. So my, so probably maybe some Acid Spray shenanigans, but I just don't understand those two options uh, at this point uh, within the Regulation E meta. But uh, either way, I feel like Moltres and Ninetales can definitely lead here with Landris in the back. Uh, for sure, and then even the Macha Gacha player, the, the Sinisha can definitely come in here. So, uh, let's go into Landis. So, we intimidate both of these physical attackers. I'm going to protect the Nine Tails here. Uh, he did go for Fake Out. Rock Slide uh, does crit me a little bit, but again, not a whole lot there. Uh, and now I can just simply set up the Veil here. He goes into Urshifu, but that's fine. Landis protects. Uh, free damage here. All right, and there's my Aurora Veil, of course. Uh, there's Protect on Ursh. That's fine. So, it's not banded. Uh, Blizzard is just a free kill onto the Landorus. Um, so, you know, that we'll take that. He brings back the Iron Hands. Okay, I'm going to go into Moltres here. I don't think he clicks an Electro Attack into a Ground type, but there's the Fake Up Pressure, uh, and he does go for Wicked Blow into the Moltres slot. So that's also pretty good there. Uh, back into Landorus, intimidating the Iron Hands yet again, and a little bit of the Urshifu, of course. Um, but another Protect. More Wild Tries absolutely doesn't do anything, right? Because of the Veil and... You know, intimidate and the defense boost. Hydreigon finally comes out. Um, so good, good switch. And he did bring it. I'm surprised he did bring it. But you know, Urshifu drops here, and now it's just Iron Hats coming out yet again. We're gonna go into the Sinisha, heal our Nine Tails, okay? And you know, it might kind of sound kind of sus in front of a Dark type, but again, we got the Fairy and the Ice type here. So yes, Snarl. Okay, that's fine. Again, just keep cycling against this Landris uh, with the Intimidate. All right, and again, you good use of protects here, but he's just not getting any damage out here. And now I know this Iron Hands doesn't have anything, so now I'm just forcing the four on one. This Hydreigon does click Snarl, but what is a Hydreigon gonna do? Uh, you know, one on four here. So we were able to, you know, get the job done there. You know, just a lot of damage mitigation coming out with Nine Tails and Landers, uh, and then from there, you know, didn't even really need the other two options really. Okay, so this one is a little bit more standard. This is like. Uh, your your typical standard six, right? With Tornadus uh, and Ogre Pond and friends, you got the Arcanine Chen Pao Fluttermane here, and then there's a real one. You know, as standard as it gets, but you know, your own Intimidate, like your own Landris, looks really good here. He has to bring Chen Pao, uh, but if he does, then how does he beat the rest of the squad? Even if he does do that, so uh, I feel like yet again we could do something like this where we lead the Moltres and the Dun Nine Tails, and now we can even switch into Landris if we so choose. Uh, but uh, which is what we do. So there's the night the the Arcanine intimidated flutter protects. That's fine Aurora comes out head smash into my nances. We do live right so here comes Heatran just in case he wants to go for fire move There's Rillaboom. That's not the switch in um, Because I, I I'm more I'm more concerned with the flutter main dying. I don't really care about your your Arcanine here. I have a Heatran here 
Okay, so there's Chen Pao. That's the one we're afraid of, of course. So we're going to go back into Nine Tails. We'll sacrifice it. He actually clicks Protect. Probably not wanting to take Heat Wave. Um, but then Fake Out Protect. That doesn't make sense. So you you that's a bad play. I feel like you should have just attacked there. So we'll protect Nine Tails. He went for the Glide, so I'm glad I protected there. And we just removed the Rillaboom, of course, because, you know, Heat Wave is a great move here. Um, <clears throat> and then now it's just, you know, Chen Pao and Arcanine here. Uh, protect Chen Pao here, but that's okay. You know, I have a Landers in the back. I just wanted the chip damage, you know, just to break the Sash. But, you know, I click Earth Power here. And then, you know, the Arcanine, of course, is, is at my mercy. Now we have Landers. All we have to do is just simply click U-Turn. He goes Terror Guard. That doesn't matter. All right, out we go into Moltres. And here is, and Moltres actually lives anyway, you know, and then um, Earth Power, you know, just pretty much cleaning things up there. So, you know, Veil vale was really good. Heatran, Landorus, and Ninetales once again doing the job. Moltres soaked up one attack. <laughs> All right, and we didn't even need to bring the Sinistra. All right, another one here. Similar idea, Tornadus, Landorus, Ogre Pond. Uh, and then here's the, another Arcanine. There's a Chiu and a, a Furigraph here. I don't know why there's a Chiu without a Fluttermane. To me, that's very strange in, in this sense. Um, but I feel like yet again, uh, you know, he's going to go Tornadus and something, but that's fine. We go Ninetales and Moltres yet again, you know, just in case he didn't want to lead the Furigraph. Um, Landris to intimidate the Ogre Pond, right? He goes for Terra Aspect, so it's back to neutral. Uh, there is a Sunny Day. That's why I switched out the Ninetales, just because I figured he might click Sunny Day. Um, unfortunately, it does crit me, but I don't really think the crit may have mattered. Just, it depends if he's like Adamant or Jolly, right? But... All right, he removes my Moltres, right? Which is, you know, interesting, right? But, you know, he, he figured, I'm going to ignore the Ninetales. I'm going to click Sunny Day, take the snow away, uh, and then, you know, go from here. So I'm going to go Heatran, which is why Heatran is really good in matchups like that. Because if you're going to change the weather, then Heatran all of a sudden looks like a monster. Okay, and of course, side by side with Landers, this is like old VGC right here. Terra Flying, get rid of the Ogre Pond, of course. Uh, didn't really need the, the, the flying, <clears throat> you know, actually in that sense, right? So I could have just stayed um, with here, but uh, he did not click Tailwind, so I was a little bit suspicious. But he does get a speed drop. Um, Heat Wave is going to do a lot because he clicks Sunny Day, so there's that. No burn, but that's okay. Um, and there's the Chiyu. So I don't outspeed it at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to retreat and reset my speed. All right, so here comes Night Tails. Take away the, the Sun. All right, Bleak Wind comes out, probably goes Dark Pulse here, uh, and he does. I just hope to survive and or not get flinched, and I don't, so I take on the Tornadus, which is huge, right? Because now he's trapped in here with my Landers. There's Fragrant, that's not the Mon to bring. So all we have to do is just protect the Ninetales, uh, and then we could do Blizzard Spam, and, and, and Landers can come in and finish the job, right? But he clicked Heat Wave there, um, so he boosted my Heatran and did so much damage altogether. Uh, and he did kill the Heatran, which means free switch into Landorus, all right, which means stopping Tantrum here, Blizzard everywhere else, okay, and that's pretty much all she wrote, right? We didn't need to bring <clears throat> the Sinistra here either, and Moltres was unfortunately a crit. So one more time, here is the pace yet again. So let me know what you think of this, you know, Sinistra Moltres team with, you know, a bunch of support options here. Uh, I think it works relatively well. You can definitely win uh, a ton of games with something like this. And it's just a super bulky team. You're going to live a lot of hits. All right. And then from here, you know, just matcha gacha is just a really, really fun move just in general. Right. So, uh, but yeah, if this is something you're interested in, if you need help uh, with team building for the regulation E format uh, and, you know, you just don't know where to start, uh, feel free to sign up on the channel for coaching. Uh, our team building sessions are once again available. Uh, it's a tier three sub to the channel. So if you look in the video description, there is a link to join the channel with the tier three sub. So click it and join it. Or there is a pinned comment in the comment section, same link, click it, join the channel, uh, or every single video has a join now button. Okay. Uh, and then that being said, you might as well join the discord. We almost have 700 people within the discord. So, uh, you know, feel free to join that and, you know, interact with me and the rest of my you know, community. And from there, you, you might even get some ideas there and just some players to do some best of three practice just in general, right? But anyway, um, we'll be back with another video in the next one, guys. Peace out and have a good one.